Jeremiah 12, verse 5. If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, how canst thou contend with the horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trustest, they wearied thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? Are the scriptures indicating that if you're going to run an endurance race with horses, you need to first contend with the horsemen. We were discussing, my wife and I, about, about this because it, it came immediately to my mind. Everybody that, that closed up church broke from their routine and, and just said, it's only for two weeks, so it's okay. It came into, immediately to my mind, what do you do? When do you decide that it's going to be? I knew it wouldn't be two weeks. I don't know how they missed it, but you had to have known. <laughs> okay, so they say, oh, it's going to be two weeks, but here are we are at, like, what, four, going on five, okay, of shutting down the churches voluntarily, okay? How did they not know it would be longer? And, and when do you decide, okay, now it's time to turn on? I don't think those churches will ever be the same. I think there's a lot of people that have fallen away and they're gone into sin and, and turned from the things of God. There's a lot of people that want to be in church, but they can't. They're frustrated. They're jaded, right? They're going to come back maybe with that attitude. There's a lot of people that are just, just, just out of the fight, giving up. I want nothing to do with this. There's a lot of people that in the time when kings go to battle, in the time when churches go to church, they instead are up on their rooftop falling into sin because church is closed. There's no battle, right? There's nothing prepared for them, okay? So I thought to myself, this, when do you kick it on? Even if you do, these are behind, okay? Because here's what happens. I did an endurance race where I got up to being able to do 100 miles on the bike, okay? But I didn't go from nothing to 100 miles just in a day, okay? I didn't even go from nothing to 50 miles, on the bike. Uh, the first ride, ride was maybe five miles, and that was hard, okay? So it was one of these slow ramp ups, okay? I, I, I worked my way a few miles at a time to getting to the point. That's endurance. You need to start small and get up there, right? You wanna do a thousand push ups in a row, okay? You gotta start with one. Now, here's what we're gonna have, and this is the problem. If thou if thou was wearied by the footman, how can you contend with horses? But if you were able to work your way up to the footman, it's going to be a lot easier to get to the horses, is it not? Because you've balanced it. You've stretched out the, the time. So if you've gotten, maybe in, in 10 weeks, you've got to run with horses. And, and humans can do that, believe it or not. There's races over in Europe where, where men actually beat horses in a foot race. Because horses don't have very good endurance compared to men. They can run and run and run and run. We've got to build our way up there. So we're going to have a whole bunch of Christians who have been out of the fight, out of the race, not prepared, not working, not getting after the things of God. And then they were, ex they were expecting that after two weeks they would turn it on. Well, now you have somebody that's essentially in my 100-mile race picture. They went from instead of 0 to 5 to 10 to 15 to 20. You've got somebody that now has to go from 0 to 20. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make the race. Now, what if church is closed for four weeks? Now you got somebody that's zero, 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 zero on the fourth week. They're expected, if they're following the curve of endurance and getting up to that point in 10 weeks, they're expected to, after four weeks, go up to 40 miles overnight. From zero to 40, just like that. You need to be able to run with the footmen if you expect to contend with the horses. In other words, you need to start small before you can get up to the big challenge. And now we have a world of Christian churches out there who are just sitting on their hands, not doing anything for God. And at some point, believers are going to have to make the decision that, okay, enough is enough. I'm getting spiritual. They're going to get up. They're going to change out of their track pants, brush the chips off their chest. They'll have a gut sticking out to here, spiritually speaking. They're like, all right, where's the battle? What's going to happen? They're going to fall by the sword. They will not be able to endure the fight. They will not be able to contend even with the footmen. They'll be wearied by them. And then the horses will overtake them. The second part, in the land of peace. If in the land of peace whereon thou trustest, you're wearied. If when, when it was peaceful in this nation, it was hard to go to church. It was hard to get in your Bible. It was hard to love your neighbor as yourself. It was hard to live a Christian life. 
If it was hard then when it's peaceful, now when the swelling of Jordan, now when the floods are coming, now when the things are falling apart, now when everyone's fighting against you, you think people are going to just overnight be like, yeah, I can do this. I'm going to get into the fight now. No. It will be overcome and overtaken in a moment. But those that have prepared themselves unto the battle and are ready for what's to come, seeing it aforetime, and now are setting their manners, now have a, a way about them, now they're following after the Father's business, it's going to be so much easier for them once the horses come. Once you got to run with the horses. Once you got to run with the big boys. Once you got to go to battle, right? You're going to be ready for these things. 